two ladies. We hit, we're going to go right into it. I see some people wrote pen and paper, right? So if you just listen, you'll retain about how much? Anybody? All of it. <laughs> no, 10%, maybe. Maybe. You write things down, maybe 50%. What Tony Robbins always says, if you raise your energy level, you will retain more. So how do we raise our energy level? Who remembers? I've been saying oh, What? We get our body moving. And how do I like to do that with everybody? Push-ups. Push push <laughs> All right, so we always start off with push-ups. Get a good 25 in. Let's go. I thought it was one. <laughs> Oh, we got Jack BB in the hallway doing his. Oh, sorry. No. You... test and then we give the lesson all right life gives you the test and you're like oh shoot what was the lesson before that wish i had known that the test just now who did at least 20 who did 25 who did 30 oh, oh i forgot i did more who did more than me okay so right out tim grover last time there are cool. coolers closers closers Cleaners. Cleaners. Not here, didn't show up on time. Cool, right? Got everything done like you're supposed to. Who went above and beyond? Right? Always. I see some people brought some other folks from their school. Some people went above and beyond since the last meeting. Alright, recap. Week one, we talked about our seven levels of why. Okay. Two was it's a picture. Anybody? Table. The table. You can tell who teaches school. <laughs> right? You can tell. The top of the table is nope. yep, your wine, what your goal is, right? Your wine, what you're doing, your identity. And the legs are support, right? Plus minus. Carrot, stick, right? Week three is going to be brainwashing. Here's the thing. Each lesson stands on its own. At some point in your life, these things will change, right? Two years ago, my why physically to be as strong as possible, competing powerlifting, strongman, high game. That's not my why now. Two years later, things change medically, physically, right? Things change. Your why getting through school might be just getting your degree, getting a job. You get past school and you're married, your why might be your, you and your spouse. Well, then you and your kids, right? So you will revisit these things as necessary. What was the homework from last time? Do you do? You don't know, right? Okay. Sam? Did I do it? Was, what was the homework? What was the the tabletop the and the carrot and stick. Okay, so the tabletop, your why, right? We did that in the first one. The carrot and stick was really the homework, right? TJ, what was, what was, what was the carrot that you had for you? The carrot that I had for me. So I don't know if I understood this right. When we talked about it, I wrote next to carrot positive reinforcement sure like there's something i'm running towards yes um so i wrote so my best case scenario uh family personal wealth money time that works for me athlete community relationships connected and moving with viewers huge huge stick anybody bj those are positive what's a stick what's a negative oh so if you don't do well what hurts You, got, you, you don't make the sectionals, you don't make the regionals, you lose, right? 
as a stick. So, I, I, I might have explained this poorly to you guys. The way, the way I explained it was, carrot, pleasure, that's, that's your best case scenario. Sure. It's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Your stick, the thing that beats your ass and pushes you forward, that's your worst case scenario. That's the thing you don't want to leave. That, that, that works great too. That works great so too. I'll, I'll tell you that my worst case scenario, this is 10, 15, whatever. Uh, broke, running truck parts, or too much free time, or being behind solely as a coach. Uh, no family, no personal relationships, working to go to work, to go home, to go to work. So, you know, the opposite, right? So, broadly, your goal moves you in a direction, right? You want to break that down always very specifically, one year, six months, one month, one week, then down to today, down to today, right? So if you're late, there's pain. That's just this morning. What about this evening, right? If you're here on time, you can talk a little more. You can come up, come to me with more questions, right? Just showing up a little bit earlier, you get more carry, right? I will help you more. If you're here more, we help you more. If you're around TJ more, we help you more. If you're around him less, you get less. You get stick, right? Okay. Now, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So I try to take these broad, universal laws and I apply them personally and professionally, right? And so there's gonna be a little bit of math to reinforce these two things, right? Now, if you're around TJ, you know force equals mass times, anybody in physics, not TJ, acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. So when you're moving weight, let's say you're a 300 pound bench and a good speed weight would be 200 pounds at about two thirds, okay? That's the mass, 200 pounds. Your force that you can generate depends on how fast you accelerate, whatever your speed is, right? Your force, whatever you're pressing, however, if you can go all out and press that 200 pounds as hard as you can, that force you just generated essentially is you as an athlete, okay? So if Sam can do that, whatever he is, whatever he can do with all out, this is what he looks like now from that. This is what his body looks like, right? This is the force that he can generate on the field against somebody. If he wants to increase force, one of these has to change, if not both, right? Now, if he can do his speed at, say, one meter per second, all out, all out, but he comes in today and he's benching and he just kind of goes, oh, so what more upset? This isn't that big of a deal. I'm just kind of going half out, right? He's already given half of this. This is less than what he can do. Then his force then goes down, which means he then goes down, right? His body does not adapt in a positive direction. It adapts in a weaker direction. He is now worse. The only way to make your body adapt is to put the stress on it to make it to make it change. If you come in and you go half out, you adapt in the wrong direction. So the way to improve, create more force, change your body, change your athlete, change whatever you want on the field, you have to go all out. If you don't, the math doesn't work. You end up losing. So whether you do that on the bench, or how you do your recovery, or how you are with your relationship with your spouse, if you go all out, you got a better shot of adapting and evolving. And if you don't, you don't. That's not me, that's just <laughs> Newton, right? Mm -hmm. That's just nature. The other math equation, if you take basic geometry, if P, then Q is the math, right? In a theorem, right? If this box has four right angles and all sides are equal, then it is a square. If it looks like this, one less right angle, if not Q, then not P. If I go all out, I can be faster, I can be stronger, I can be more disciplined, I can be tougher, I can be a bitter, bad, bigger badass. 
If I'm not don't, if I'm not these things, it means I did not do these things. That's not me. That's just basic geometry, right? That's math telling you how you are. Do you know your why? If you don't know it, you don't get. Mm -hmm. If you don't have carrot and a stick, you don't get. If you have a strong carrot and a stick, then you get. Okay? That's not me. I say nothing else the rest of your life. This is still gonna hold true. I get my bus, it's still gonna be true. You're gonna be 50 years old and be like, oh shit, that's right. It's not because Jim made it right. It just is. That's not me. That's everything. Right? You understand this? Who doesn't get this? Who needs to be over again? I'm happy. I'm fired up. I listened to my little video on the way here, right? Did my 30 push ups. Okay? Carrots and stick. Homework real quick. All right. If you, I want you to take what TJ gave you guys, which was fantastic. You guys are thinking broadly. Break that down for a month, and then break that down for a week, and break that down for a day. Okay? Now, right now, for next week. Month, week, day. I, I want to say something about the daily. Um, and Andrew and uh, Jason's in here. But, um, weight. If you don't put your weight in the damn computer, that one box that you go click, 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 and then put your phone away for the rest of the day, if you don't record your weight, that's a daily loss. Okay, that's a, everybody here is a football athlete, which means you're getting hit and you're hitting people, which means you need mass. Brian just came in and told me he lost 17 pounds in the last six weeks. Right? So I weigh in every day. I want to know where I'm at. Feedback, data. If I don't have data, I can't evolve. I don't see what the stick is. If I'm not below 275, I can't wear the watch I want. That was my huge carrot, right? I can still wear it. Just I'm wearing this one today because I'm going to All right. Uh, the more you have that, the more successful you're going to be. Now, am I preaching you have to be perfect? No, impossible. No, impossible. What does Ohio State do? Well, if you play at Ohio State or if you play in the pros, every time you practice, every time you play, you have your grading card, your report card from that day. So Ohio State, they have about 12 or 15 criteria. One is your weight, one is your urine color, see if you're dehydrated. Did you work out? Did you hit a PR? What's your nutrition like? How did you do in film when you got graded? There's usually a quiz every day. So there's about 12 things, right? They grade you on your film and practice. Did you hit your blocks? Did you make your blocks? Did you make your tackles or not? They, they take all of that. They have their GAs. They go through all the data. And if you are at at least 80% good, you're fine. You can go to the next practice, no big deal. If you're below 80%, you can go to practice, but then you get a little bit of extra practice. Afterwards. Go see this coach. Bring the sweats. Go see this coach. Just bring on one play. Put it on the field. You get a little bit of extra practice. So you need to have your minimum goal. You need to have your main goal. And you have your stretch goal. The minimum has got to be hit 80%. Maybe your main goal is 85. Maybe your stretch is 90. Okay, track that. Okay, brain washing. What's that mean to anybody? Robert. Um, being able to manipulate someone the way that you want to. Sure, right? Mentally? Smith, what's that mean to you, brain washing? Uh, putting an idea in someone's head. Sure, right? Yeah. Making yourself do something that you need. Could be, right? Could be good, could be not good. Right? What was an example of something not good brainwashing? I think 1941, 39, 44, right? German. German, German, German right? <laughs> not good. Not, 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 good. Not, not, well, he's good at it. He was good at it. Great at it, right? But not a good thing, right? Give me an example of something a good thing. Jack. You should brush your teeth before you go. <laughs> 
Right? <laughs> it's a good habit. But uh, that's not really brainwashing, like you're me manipulating your brain, right? Give me a good help. Okay. So, anybody listen to music when they train? Anybody listen to certain songs mm. when they train? So if I'm going to a max lift or a max stone or a max sledge, and what's something I usually listen to? Anything? Uh, let's listen to David Goggins. David uh, Goggins, Jocko. right? Jocko, right? Uh, I like I like to listen to the haka that's performed by New Zealand rugby team, <laughs> where they're they're smashing their legs and they're calling up the the gods from the earth to come through their souls, right? Or um, Bawadaba by Kid Rock, right? Yeah. Why do you listen to that certain song? If you're around Dustin Hall's probably three, right? Why do people listen to that? Why do you put on your favorite song during something tight? Get your mind right. Get your mind right, right? You guys listen to a certain song before you guys go on the field to play a game on Friday nights? Is that what it is, right? Why? Get your head going. You want to be excited? I listened to a two minute video on the way here, specifically. Right? Why? Get your head right. Why do you want to just do it once? Once on one one night, or once during one one lift. You guys don't think you guys don't think you don't you don't do it now? Who goes on their phone and scrolls on social media? Anybody? You just, are you brainwashing yourself then? Yeah. Right? Anybody not doing that? You're mate. You're already brainwashed. What happens when you go to school? They try to brainwash you, get you smarter. For this one, right. <laughs> you're already doing it all the time. So manipulate that, utilize that, leverage that, leverage that. How do I do it specifically? Right? I like to, like to talk broadly and specifically. What are my actual action items? Right? We're about executing, not just talk broadly. You have paper and pencil for a reason. What's something you could do in the morning? Journal, right? Something else? Track how long you slept. Okay. So you get some data on what you did, right? I'm trying to change your brain, though. Did you wake up? That's more data. Train. Train, right? Here's what I do. I get up, and I take our dumbest dog, who I love, right? And I walk that dog for anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, usually, with a rock, so that's not without a rock. So I'm just walking. That really brainwashing me? No. I could use that time to meditate and pray, right? Brainwash myself that way. I do that for about 10 minutes. And then for the rest of the time, I put on something on my phone that's in my head. So I'm either listening to David Goggins, Jocko, right? Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, right? Matt Wenning, Westside Barbell, T Nation. Millionaire producer, traction. So I got 40 minutes of learning something, or I'm getting self pumped up to attack my day. Then I come home and I pull out the next book I'm reading, right? You name it. And I'm then brainwashing myself further. I'm not in school, so I make my own school. I'm only what I want to learn about. I cram that in my head for the next half hour, hour, and then I start writing for an hour. Right? That's two hours. I have to be up kind of early. So if I'm writing that book, it has to be out by November 1st. I need information coming in. I meet with you guys. You guys give me information. So now that's two hours of specific brainwashing. I'm creating this mindset. Like I wake up, not much sleep from having traveled, and I'm ready to go simply because I went through that little motion. I'm all, you guys know who David Goggins is? Have you ever listened to him, right? He's jacked up all the time. So I want to get going, I just get in my head and change everything about me. If I'm not feeling right, quick 25, 30 push-ups, all right, I'm feeling something, I'm doing something, right? My motion then creates emotion that I'm moving forward. Brainwash myself, how can I get better in that hour? Take a different direction, right? I'm all jacked up all day long. You can't be in that state all day long. I'm driving home. I need to transition this kind of calm down, hang out with my kids, hang out with my wife. Put on a little jazz music, mm -hmm. big band music, old band music, right? It's just soothing. I can calm down, change my state, relax, recover. I used to say, right, I would coach six hours, six of the classes of the day, 
there's all this DMX music, it's me against the bar, it's me against the athlete, trying to, it's always aggression, aggression, aggression. You can't be in that state all day long. You gotta be able to recover and relax. How do you do that? How do you brainwash yourself to relax and recover better? What about right before you go to bed? Are you scrolling? It's fucking up your head. Do you see anything electronic? All the synapses are going wild in your brain. You can't calm down, you don't sleep as well. Do you read something different? Do you read, do you calm down that way and then go to bed? Yes, right? You brainwash yourself. The last thing you watch on TV is what you're dreaming about. The last thing you're reading about is what you're dreaming about. Thomas Edison, best inventor ever, what would he do? He would use that subconscious specifically, strategically to get better. How would he do that? He'd be working on a problem, taking all his notes, working on this, trying to figure out how to create the light bulb, right? Write down this, think, 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 can't figure it out, fuck. All right, all right, tired of the since three in the morning. I'm Thomas Edison, not really putting this in this case. Sits down next to his table, nice comfortable chair, has an end table or a little box right next to it, puts a cast iron frying pan on the table, right below his hand. So if I had a chair, I could sit like this, right? Mm -hmm. And right here, right down here is where the cast iron and the skillet, right? Hard metal, loud. Holds a rock or a ball in his hand. He's getting tired, he's getting tired. He drifts off to sleep. Let's go to the ball. Ball hits the pan, wakes himself up. What was I just turning about? What was I turning about? Oh shit! Figured it out. Would do that specifically day in and day out, manipulate his self conscious to help further his ideas, come up with new ideas, make new inventions. He's brainwashing himself with his current problem, then uses his subconscious to figure it out. And that's his process for doing it. So come up with how you want to brainwash yourself right before you go to sleep. Because you're doing it one way or the other. Watching movies, scrolling, you're either poisoning your head or you're improving your head. It's one or the other, but it's happening either way. You ever have a fight with your parent and then go to bed, how's that feel? Bad. You ever have a fight with your spouse and go to bed, how's that feel? Bad. How do you sleep? Bad. We'll get into recovery on a different day on how to optimize your sleep that's not today but the point is you can you are brainwashing yourself now change how you're doing it right yeah good question no, no, no. feedback something say something the more you talk the better we do yes I was wondering like I read this some of books and like you talk about like when you pumped up for too much or something like True, right. If you're always having to stimulate yourself and you're not self-stimulated at all, it's, a, it's too artificial. It's not strong enough. So there's times I come in here and I live with nothing on It's just me in my head. Every once in a while, I'll add a little extra stimulus. People at Westside, they would say this. We're listening to regular music, but we're not listening to anything that we would really punch up until meet day. Because if you're always stimulated, you then get desensitized to it. If you're always on cocaine, you get desensitized to it. If you're always on caffeine, you're desensitized to it, right? If you're always on sugar, you get desensitized to it, you need more. So yeah, your why isn't big enough. You should, you should be able to do a ton of it with just on your why. But how can I even evolve that, right? Because if you didn't get some of these things done, you should be revisiting back to your why. It probably wasn't. It wasn't big enough. I give you guys the uh, candy bar story. I teach her three or four times. My kids haven't heard the candy bar story, right? Yeah, get a little candy bar story. No, we need a candy bar story. Right. So, it's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It just was. My family grew up, didn't have much money. Food stamps, which means you get some things from the government, helps you buy food because you don't have much money. I wanted, when I was 12, a Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play Super Mario Brothers, great game. Loved it, loved it to this day. 
No gym we can't afford is ninety nine dollars. No video games in the house. Okay, we'll, we'll see. Uh, that was the first year I was allowed to play baseball. The first time we had enough money I could play baseball. So. To just be on the team, you have to sell one box of thirty candy bars. Each is each bar is a buck. You gotta raise thirty bucks to pay for a uniform. On the back of each candy bar is a coupon. One dollar off at Wendy's. So my sales pitch was, you're helping me out, great candy bar, and it's essentially free. You give me a dollar for the candy bar, you take the money, you get a dollar back, so. Great. Here's my 30 bucks, coach. All right, Jim. Guys, you guys selling more boxes, we have extra prizes. What's that? Mm -hmm. What are the extra prizes? Well, this, this, and this, and the big prizes, and Nintendo. You choose one of Nintendo. How many candy bars mm -hmm. do I need to sell for my own Nintendo and my Super Mario Brothers? 36 boxes of 30. My wife was huge. <laughs> Sold all 36, it's over a thousand candy bars. Mom, I need you to drop me over off to this neighborhood. Why? I gotta sell a couple more boxes. I haven't hit these people yet. I don't know who's gonna say yes, who's gonna say no, but I know if I hit enough, enough people will say yes, I will sell two more boxes, I can get two more, and I get my, my way to 36. If your why is huge, to Jack's point, you go out and get what you want. If I sell 30 boxes, 36 boxes of 30, then I get Nintendo. No, then no. So, all of it comes back to the why. Why am I here? I'm here because I've had this chance before I die to make my family better and to touch not just people in this gym, but more broadly people out there that I think that if you can change your mindset, will then have, have changed who you are and your whole destiny and, and what you become down the road. And maybe you and your spouse, or maybe you and your spouse and your kids. Is your endeavor hard? You want to play football at a high level? You want to lose a lot of weight and do Murph real well? Is that hard? Are you going to get cheated along the way? Is there a coach that's going to be shitty to you? Or someone going to get a random injury? Is it going to be even harder? Even if you do everything right, is it still going to be harder than, than that? Unforeseen circumstances, COVID ever going to hit anybody and change everything around? What gets you through that? That's still the world you live in. You can't change that. You can only change you, so change you. Come up with a process, not just talk about this high level like I'm doing. Process. Revisit your why. Come up with your carrot and your stick. Okay? Brainwash yourself to get yourself in the habit, in the mindset of what you want. Do you have no spiritual relationship? Pray in the morning, pray before you go to bed. Jim listens to Father Mike. Breaks down a daily passage of the Bible daily. It's fantastic. Better than any priest I ever went to. I had 12 years of Catholic school. You want to be stronger? Listen to people that are stronger. Learn, learn from that. You want to be a better coach? What coaches do you follow? Who puts up coaching content? At JR, what's his name? Sam Sandlin, went to Oklahoma. Puts out content every day on how to get recruited, and then something about Jesus. If you, if you have no idea how to get recruited, everything he puts out is bull. So there's homework, right? AM, PM's social media feed. Okay, so what? Is one way you can improve, you can brainwash yourself towards your goal in the morning. That's all okay. What is one way you can brainwash yourself in the evening? To get you where you want to go, that's a homework item. If we weren't recording this video, I'd show you my social media feed. Now there's some for the business, right? It is what it is. But if you go my personal Instagram feed, you're gonna see the things that I want to learn about. Uh, macro millionaire, millionaire producer. Sun Tzu's Art of War, right? Matt Lanning, West Side Barbell, T Nation, Log Cabins, National Parks, Entrepreneurs, all these authors, right? So getting off social media is a great thing unless you're using it and you're following all these folks and everything they put out is geared towards that. So every time I pull up my personal Instagram feed, I'm getting better, getting better, getting better. 
I'm doing this for 15 minutes. All right, stop. Well, the next task, I can't sit there for six hours and my day, right? But I can get brainwashed for 15 minutes on things I'm interested in in a positive way. So find six things that you want to follow if you're on social media. And everything in life is a zero sum game. If you add six, you got to delete six. Okay? Cut out the shit. Add in something good, you are better. I just gave you guys homework and goals, right? Let me give your homework and goals. Like Tim Grover's three things. Anybody do more than 25 questions? I gave you guys the test before the, the lesson, right? I knew the test and the lesson. I came in. I know I'm going to be all over today because I'm going to be ready. We'll worry about next time. <laughs> <laughs> Some Jack has Jack has to come here and do 80. I'm going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Feedback, anything. We can end it now. One, two, three, Will Bundy. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, so it's just a social media that we add six to and six. That's one, of, that's one of the pieces. And do we have to do that for A and M too? No, no, no. So your social media is one thing, okay. one task. Add six positive things and things you want to get better at. Take away six things that detract from you. That's one thing. Another thing is add something you want to brainwash, a process, from that way you want to brainwash yourself in the morning. Journaling, writing something down, reading something, and in the evening. Start my day, end my day well. So everything goes like shit during the rest of the day. I know I got it. This is going to help me. This is going to help me. One thing that helps me every day, I make my bed. Mm -hmm. I come home and everything sucks. At least I'm getting into a bed that's put together, squared away, and comfortable. It's not just more shit, right? So, something positive, brainwash yourself in the morning, in the evening, and then six things you're going to add on your social media, six things you're going to take away. I would follow me personally <laughs> on Instagram because more and more going forward, I'm going to use that platform to give you guys these more lessons. I would say the overarching theme is being intentional, right? With the brainwashing, the social media ads and deletes. You're being intentional about what you're putting in. Garbage in, garbage out. Also, as far as specifics, it's great to say this is going to be my AM and PM brainwashing, but the more specific you can be, the better. I will listen to the Jocko podcast every Thursday a.m. because it comes out on Wednesday. Don't just be overarching. Be specific because then when we start talking about measurement, you actually have a specific to measure against. She just ate up with that shit. Ooh. Hey, we're going to mention today. I don't care what it is. Let's pick up our or mention. No. No. Specifically, we're going to bench this at this time, this, this speed, and this percentage. And we're going to measure it because if you don't have it measured, you can't adjust it. If you don't have the habit, you can't adjust it. If this is a broad habit, we can adjust a little. Right, we're now trying to measure things, but there's the more granular you get, the more you can adjust because you know what to adjust. Right? I'm going to get up and just think. Right, be specific. Real good, real good. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. One thing, going back to the carrot and the stick and reinforcing your why. When you and I talked about this, um, there is a landmark uh, psychological study done by a guy named Jacques Pankseff. Uh, he worked with rats. He split rats oh, yeah. born into captivity into two different groups. And all these rats had little spring scales tied onto their tail to measure motivation, how hard they pull on it. Okay, so one group had food in front of them, okay? And one group had food in front of them, and then they had cat odor wafted in the box. Mm. Again, born in captivity. So having never seen a cat, they already know they're afraid of them because it's in here, right? So we all got shit that we're afraid of. Right. The group that only had food in front of them did not pull as hard as the group that had food in front of them and cat odor behind them. Mm. Have something that you want to chase, but have something that's chasing you. Worst case scenario. What is your worst day? What is your worst week? What is your worst month? Have that in mind. And at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, 
you have your measuring stick, which Jen's talking about. I was talking to one of the athletes here. He was asking about different programming from another gym. I said, I'll take the Pepsi Challenge against that other gym. Mm -hmm. Because, well, this is like Ben Bergeron, or this is, you know, Mike. Well, we don't know what the Pepsi challenge is. I know. The Pepsi challenge means that a long time ago it was Coke versus Pepsi, and they're going to do a blind taste test. Which one tastes better? That's the Pepsi challenge. So you take these high-level coaches that uh, have their own programming for their gyms, and they say to me, we should subscribe and buy that. And I said, I'll take the challenge against that. I can be specific to you and you do better than this other guy. He's like, no. I go, bet. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jim, let's bet. What's going on? I go, Grand, 100 grand, whatever the, whatever the balance is of my mortgage, 250 grand. Mm -hmm. like what? I go, if I put that much pressure on me, how do I lose? How do I lose? If I got to come home and tell my wife I lost this much money, right? If I put that much pressure, this is a legit conversation. If I put that much pressure on me, how do I lose? I'll give all day figuring that out and I'll beat that person, right? If you add that much pressure, how do you lose? I only want to talk to you about 30 minutes because there's another 23 and a half hours a day where you can go out and execute. Let's talk a little bit. Let's over execute now. All right. Let's go. See you guys. All right. Give me up the boxes. Take them back out. Yeah, you do that. And then we're going to the park. Anybody wants to do breakfast? It's still on Sam. <laughs> Sam didn't even hear you. No, I did it.